Hello, friends. Do you remember me? My name is Kathy. Probably haven't seen me for a while. Months. On a regular schedule. So, I am here with my list to tell you all what's been going on. So, welcome. This is called Minivan Monday. I am posting the same video on both my channels. So if you are seeing this on Spicy Cat Jams, you are already used to Minivan Monday. If you are seeing this on Spicy Cat Colors, I'm not going to be coloring. And you'll find out why. I mean, I'm still coloring, but I can't film a color and chat, which I will explain. So I am just going to be talking. So if you like to listen to chatty videos while you are coloring, crafting, cleaning, whatever you like to do, there's really no need to have to look at me because I got nothing to show you. I do have a drink here. I may or may not start crying, but then I'll probably pause it, try and get my composure together. But basically, we are in my minivan down by the lake. You can't see it. This is like the preferred locale for Minivan Monday, but it's nice and peaceful for now. So we will take it. So I have not done a proper Minivan Monday or basically any type of video chat since it was still the dead of winter. So there's a lot of things and I'm just going to go through chronologically because that's how it rolls for me. And so the good and the bad will all be mixed together. But yeah, just so you know, if you follow both of my YouTube channels, it's the same video. You don't have to watch it twice unless you really want to. But um, yeah, I'm going to post them. So they post the same time and I can talk to all of my friends. So let's go back to when there was still ice on this lake back in February, I think, is really the last I'd updated anybody on anything. So in February, beginning of the month, I did a fun thing. My husband and I did a surprise road trip on our weekend off to visit my girlfriend. I call her my sister. Her kids call me auntie, the one whose husband passed away. I know I shared that. So he had passed away in October very suddenly, unexpectedly. And so February was his birthday. So my um, little nephew, well, he's not that little. He's like taller than me. But he had, um, my friend's been posting like little snippets of life, you know, that's the challenges and things that he, just on, she posts on Facebook, little snippets and stories of things that have um, come about now that her husband is gone. And so they were talking about my nephew asked if she was still going to bake a cake for dad's birthday. And she's like, well, of course we can have a birthday cake for dad. And I wonder what kind we should get. And kind of the joke was his birthday was the beginning of February. So it was kind of whatever was in the pantry. It might be a Halloween cake. It might be a Christmas cake. You didn't know it was whatever she'd picked up on discount after the holiday. And that was the type of birthday cake he had. And it was like their little family thing. Whoa. There was an animal down there. I hope it was just a duck or something. And isn't coming up here. <laughs> anyway, you probably didn't hear the, the water splash. So, and then my nephew said, well, mom, Shouldn't dad get an angel food cake now that he's in heaven? I know, seriously, like stab my heart. So she had posted that and I'm like, Ugh, you know, I really hadn't seen her since I'd been there for almost a month back in October. And it was our weekend off and Eddie's like, let's go. So we did this little road trip and we were Snapchatting it and she was chatting with me. You know, not really knowing what we were doing. She knows that we do random road trips. And then I was like 20 miles from her house. And I'm like, well, what's for supper? <laughs> She's like, what? And I'm like, well, I'm at the McDonald's drive through getting coffee. Should we get something to eat too? She's like, you're coming to my house? <laughs> and it was a good thing. There are very few people. First of all, there's nobody that could show up at my house. If she showed up at my house unannounced, she would still not get into the house. My house. That's a whole different thing. But, um... 
her, she was like, oh my God, come here. So it was so fun. We um, just spent the weekend with them, had fun with the kids. Sorry. Bad thing is I'm out here with the windows open. I'll probably get a bug or two in my face. Um, they love having Uncle Eddie around because he plays video games with them. I will play, but the only reason they like to play with me is because they can beat me very easily. Seriously. The one girl, that's the only reason she wanted to play with us, or with me and her mom, so she could win. And she did. So, it was just a very nice, um, spirit-lifting kind of, um, weekend. It was a lot of fun. And just to give her a break, because it's a lot. Those of you that are parents, whether you're, if you're a single parent, I mean, whew, it is not easy. And to go from a two parent household to a one parent household, I mean, I know in growing up, you know, that you had the like parents you could get away with more and the other one that you didn't. And like for us, it was like when dad said to stop, you stopped. So that was how it is in my girlfriend's house. And now she doesn't have that voice. So she has three teenagers that aren't mentally at the same level of understanding how difficult this is for mom and don't always show the best choices, but they're teenagers. Anyway, so I think it was nice for her. So that was kind of fun. We did that. And then we came home and I had made appointments for, did we get all the cats in? I can't remember now. I know I had, I think it was just Zoe and Ozzy first. And then the, so the, uh, our two oldest cats, which Zoe turned 17 in April. Her birthday's the same as mine. And Ozzy was just a year younger than her, but Ozzy I knew was really sick. And all of my friends think I'm so terrible because I called to make these appointments with the vet. And I said, I think this is going to be Ozzy's end of life appointment, <laughs> which how do you put it? It's like, he was down to skin and bones. He did not seem to be in pain, but there was obviously something wrong. He got these large open sores. And I mean, I could tell he was not, he did not have long left for this world. So everyone's like, I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, well, what was I supposed to do? And we did, we got there and the vet checked him over and she's like, yes, he obviously, you know, he'd lost weight and she could tell you know, it was probably some type of cancer, but really what were we going to do? He was 16 years old and, um, I love my pets. My pets are, are my children, but they are still at the end of the day, my pets. And I, unfortunately, if I could afford to, I would do everything I could to try and save them, but I can't. So it was Ozzy's end of life. And it was the flipping hardest. Eddie cannot handle that type of thing. So he had to leave the room. And then I stayed. And that stinker, it's like he would not. They had to give him like two shots of just the relaxing one to make him fall asleep. Because he would not fall asleep. And he just sat there and purred and purred and purred. And my heart was breaking and breaking and breaking. And the tears were flowing. <sighs> my little Oz man. He's something else. And he brought so much joy to our life. And I do miss him. But it happens. And then Zoe, they were like, when I told her how old she was, she's like, oh my gosh. Because she had like a little bit of tartar. And she's like, well, if that's all she's got wrong with her at 17, she's doing good. So she's doing well. And then the following week, we brought the three boys, the three and unders. And this was funny. So I like... When I, Eddie left the room with Zoe, I said, well, go pay the bill and I'll stay here with Ozzy. You know, she'll bring the paperwork out. Evidently, he didn't listen. So I like walked out because the lady was busy with another customer when um, I walked, I left after Ozzy had gone to sleep and I'm crying and there's other people there and I'm thinking, okay, Eddie paid the bill. No, he didn't. So we like get out. We're halfway home and I'm like, well, did you get a receipt or, you know, whatever. So I go, I didn't pay anything. I'm like, seriously, Edward. Oh, there's a bird right over there. Hmm. So we came in the next week and we had the three boys 
And it was pretty funny because we have Diesel who's giant. He's like a puma. And he's just a big, he's not fat. He's just big. I don't know what his parents were, but he was a stray. So he's big and bulky and like 21 pounds. And then we pull out Huey, who was the bottle fed baby, who is now bigger, like 21 something pounds. And he is chubby. So should we get the whole, you know, cats that are overweight can get diabetes. Didn't say anything with diesel. And then I, and I may have said this in a video because I thought it was funny. And then I pull out Frankie. <laughs> who is, I said, oh, and then here's our itty bitty kitty. And she's like, no, this is what a normal cat size is. <laughs> But Frankie looks like he's, he was like, he's like half their size. He was like 10 pounds. Anyway, so that's, and those boys are all fine. So that was fun. All the kids got their appointments done. So that was all good. So we go into March and work has been, I don't talk a lot because I think there's actually some people I work with that might watch these or they at least know I do videos. So I try to leave a lot of that private as far as where I work, what I do, blah, blah, blah. It has not been a good environment for a long time for my mental well-being at my job. Very much unappreciated, over-pushed, you know, heaven forbid you do something wrong, you're more or less ostracized and criticized, but forget the fact you're working extra hours and doing the best you can and haven't had the training you need to do these jobs. No, we don't care about that. So work has been beyond, beyond stressful. And then you add in that I had to work, well, it's not like I had to, but the person I'm normally, my teammate, got pulled to a different shift to cover because of absences and training. So for several months, it was my husband and I working together. Okay, those of you, I've talked about this before, you can love someone, doesn't mean you should work with them. And if I can't get him to pick up his dirty underwear, why is he going to listen to me when I try and tell him how to do something at work? Even though I'm the person that knows more than he does. So that's been stressful. And then, um, so it was like, it was very stressful. And then there's been a lot of turnover everywhere else. So basically because it's all new people in another area and my job is to basically fix things. I had to fix a lot of things at the location I'm at. In addition, I am responsible to fix things at five or six other facilities throughout the country that they only, I guess, decided to staff my type of position at one. And oh, you can cover all of them. So those 12 hour shifts were very wearing. And I had, I don't know the technical term for it, whether it was a panic attack, anxiety attack, but at work, I reached the point, I actually, my heart was racing. I couldn't catch my breath. I was completely felt I had no control of anything. Instantly, like, crying uncontrollably. And I'm sitting there at my desk, and there's work all going on around me. And I had to get up. And walk out of that office and went up to the restroom because where else can you go to have a moment and pull myself together and it was scary scary um I've always prided myself that I can manage I've stress and I've been through a lot that's kind of forced me to learn how but this was the first time my body just said, forget this. No, we're not dealing with this. And it was scary. And, and Eddie was there. So I guess if that was a good thing, it wasn't a stranger or just a coworker wondering what's going on with this lady. So then the good part is he could, he can recognize it when I'm getting to the edge again. So it hasn't happened again, but that happened. And then the next week, as if things aren't good enough, Eddie's not feeling well. So this is, again, oh, I wonder, oh, I think it was a fish that jumped. Because there are a bunch of bugs over here. And I think it was a fish that jumped up to eat one. Hmm. Interesting. 
Okay, back to the story. So it was May 17th, or May, March 17th, because I remember this. And I get home from work and he's not feeling well. He's like shaking, physically shaking, which he's kind of weird that way. I mean, it's just the way his body is. If he like has fever or he's actually just cold, he will physically shake. And um, I get home from work after my 12 hour shift and he's like not feeling well. And I'm like, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to go to the doctor? You know, now's the time. Otherwise I'm going to bed because I have to go back to work tonight. So, well, yeah, maybe we should just to be safe. So we take him into the clinic, which is nearest us where we do our regular doctoring. And the problem with my husband's health issues is he has a lot of them. And he has, when people do like your, you know, you go to the doctor, you show up at the emergency room, they do like some basic blood tests and all that. He has some things. Okay, I'm not going to get into what his specific health issues are. But if a doctor that does not know him or his health history sees these results, they freak out. And it's happened before and they like put him in the hospital right away. And yeah, it's a thing. So of course... That's what happens because his regular doctors and specialists were not in that day. And that doctor is convinced, you know, he should not even be walking around. There's something wrong. And he's looking at all these test results, which were nothing to do with what was wrong. But evidently there's a bit, I don't know. This is where I don't know if there's actually a bed shortage at hospitals right now, or if it's because there's a shortage when you're what they consider a high risk regardless they like evidently called all the hospitals in the state of Minnesota and found one that would take him and he needed to go immediately for emergency treatment and it was about an hour away from us in a downtown metro area and they were going to send him via ambulance and I'm like well can I just take him because I'm going to be following the ambulance anyway and I drove him here and they're like, oh, you know, heaven forbid something happened to him. So you have to like sign a bunch of papers that you're not going to sue them if he cacked off on the drive and I took him and they didn't force him to go by ambulance. Anyway, I get him to this hospital. As I said, it is in a downtown metro area. Good hospital. Nothing wrong with the hospital, but I have not slept. I'm out of my element. And it's this huge, massive place. So we sit basically in the emergency room all day with every specialist coming and going and trying to figure out what was going on. And he's obviously sick. He's, you can tell he's not feeling well. He is shaking. He is so cold. Um, but they couldn't find fever. Well, they finally did an internal temperature. And guess what? He did have a fever, which is then a sign of infection. So now we can do something. So by now it's like four o'clock. I have not slept at all. I've been like in contact with my work people. And I'm like, there's no way I can be, even if I could get there tonight, I have not slept. I cannot work 12 hours. So, um, I, what did I do? Well, we stayed there, finally got him in a hospital room like 7 30 at night I get him up to the room which is I'm exhausted and I am not physically adept in any ways and when I am not rested it's even worse so I am physically mentally beyond we get up to the hospital room well in this hospital I'm sure it's because of COVID regulations you cannot have a family member stay there overnight with you in your room which is typically what I do when he's been in the hospital. Sadly, this is not the first time. And I have to leave and then drive home. So I'm trying to get out of there. Of course, it's a maze. It's just a mess. Doors are closed. It should be open. Finally get out of there. And now I have to drive home an hour. Have not slept again. Been up for over 24 hours. I do manage to get home. I stop at Taco Bell to get something to eat, get home by about 10, 10 30 and just crash hard. 
So check in with him the next day. I mean, I could just abbreviate all of this, but there was a lot that happened this week. So again, if this isn't your type of video, you don't have to stay and listen. Because if I hadn't told you, it's going to be a long one. We're only on March. Um, and they're trying to figure out he obviously had an infection, but they didn't know where it was sourced from. So they're pumping him full of antibiotics, blah, blah, blah. So we decide I do not need to come up there. And did I get someone to work that next night? I think I had the weekend off. I don't remember how it worked, but I was able to not have to go to work. And I stayed home. Well, then, you know, had a little bit of sleep talking to him. Suddenly I'm getting messages from my bank questioning activity on my account. So coincidentally or not, I do not know. Because, again, the only place I used my card was at Taco Bell, which I'm not saying. But I did call and have them check. So basically my banking checking account got hacked this exact same time. And somebody is did like three Uber Eats or DoorDash orders and a Bath and Body Works purchase and a Best Buy purchase. So now I have to call with the bank people <laughs> and deal with this. And I did call the Taco Bell and say, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just trying to make sure. And if I were management, I would want to know if this were an issue. So uh, the good thing is this Taco Bell, they have security cameras that are like right on the cashier people. And she was like, pulled it up on her phone and accessed it. And she's like, okay, is this where she like asked if this was my vehicle and what color shirt is where I'm like, yep, that's me. And she could see that the person who took my card, um, just ran it through and gave it back to me. Didn't have, you know, they're not allowed to have cell phones, blah, blah, blah. And I said, good. I said, I'm happy to know that and to rule that out. So I'm sure it was an online type thing. It was just coincidence. So I had to deal with that. That was not fun. <sighs> um, and at the same time, all of this is happening. We are dealing with truck repairs on Eddie's truck. So we took it into our local mechanic who has taken care of our vehicles. As long as I've lived here, we've had no problem with him. If there's anything more than he can handle, we just go somewhere else. There's certain things he doesn't have. He's just a small town mechanic. So he was looking at my husband's vehicle and something was wrong. And he's like, the whole engine is dead and needs to be replaced. Now, this is kind of a big thing financially. And we're like, okay, we're trusting him. So we had this insurance, which again, you pick your arguments when you're married, but it was like some $2,000 policy we had to purchase, which anyway, so he was having trouble dealing the mechanic with these insurance people. So Eddie happened to be talking to uh, his sister's boyfriend and he is also a mechanic and does this kind of stuff. And um, we brought the truck to him just because he's more familiar. Now, if I were the original mechanic, I'd have been a little upset. He'd already had this thing ordered, blah, blah, blah. So we have to pay to return ship this engine he'd ordered. And we get it to my, well, he's going to now be my brother-in-law. They're getting married. But um, his mechanics go through it. And there is like a little tiny piece screw something that first mechanic dropped into where it didn't belong that caused the problem. Now, I often say that anyone can have a bad day. And it really stinks when you have a bad day at work and that bad day seriously affects somebody else. You know, I always think about the medical field. I'm like, doctors can have a bad day. People can make mistakes. Nobody is above being human, including this mechanic. Mistakes happen. But what was so frustrating, he didn't do anything to right it. We still paid him. For what he had done and yeah needs to say we don't plan on going to him anymore at that point so dealing with that 
all of this. So basically, Eddie is in the hospital for a week. Um, and they find out his infection came orally through like he needs some dental work and hasn't done it. And because of the open whatever, whatever, we'll just say it came through his mouth. And this is, again, the bad part of me, but it's the realist part of me. I do not want anything bad to happen to him, to anybody. But as we're sitting there trying to figure this out, I'm like, okay, in the emergency room, we're already being charged emergency room. They did ultrasound, EKG. I don't even know what else. Now we're in the emergency room at the big hospital. They're doing all these things. I've got like five different teams of specialists coming in. We're doing x-rays. We're doing CT scans. And I'm just like... Ka ching ka ching ka ching ka ching like and everything's built specialist i mean we have health insurance but they're not everything's covered and when i'm already dealing with enough financial stresses so to wrap that story up infection got taken care of eddie was okay came back to work we made it through march then we go into april which was my birthday and I've said before, birthdays are not my favorite thing. Um, but that's kind of a lie. I mean, I don't like a big party. I don't like being the center of attention. But if you're in my life as my husband or one of my best friends, I kind of expect you to do something. Nothing big, a card, but especially as my husband, you should do something. Nada. Not a darn thing. I'm still a little upset about that. Although I did let him know because his original plan was, so my birthday weekend, my birthday was on a Friday, and I had that weekend off, and he was told me, well, I was planning, you know, to like take you and do one of our little weekend getaways. Well, I had already scheduled an event with three of my crafty girlfriends, and so he was like, oh, well, we can just, I said, did you make any hardcore plans? And he's like, no. And I said, well, we'll just do it in two weeks on my next weekend off. No, he didn't. He, he slept and got up too late. Anyway, so I crafted with my friends and they made me feel special, which was nice. And so many people out here of my friends made me feel special. So thank you. Um, but it was, it was in my personal life a bit disappointing. So <sighs> what else have we done? I, I gotta keep looking at my notes here. Oh, I did go and have my mammogram. So there was that. And I'm trying to get some other things scheduled because I need to take care of myself. But as you will soon find out, I have not been able to do anything to take care of myself. <sighs> oh, so hence the reason there hasn't been videos from me. Let's dive off a little bit here. So coloring friends, coloring videos are nearly impossible because I film in the living room, which is where I have my desk and I do my coloring, and my husband is in the recliner next to me. Now you have caught him snoring a few times, but as I mentioned, we were working together all winter long on the same shift. When we aren't, I have like nights off, he has to work, and I actually had some time, that's when I do my filming. So we have not been able to do that. And so he's been home or when he's been sick, he's home. He's just been home all the time and I have no privacy or time to film. So if I'm lucky, I'll say, can you put your headphones in while you're watching your tickety tackety talkity, whatever you do on the phone all for hours and I can film. So that will work. But otherwise, if he's watching TV, I can't film. So that's why you're not getting any color and chats from me and really limited on what I can provide. I am still coloring like crazy because it's my stress reliever. And as you might've picked up on, my life's been a little stressful. So, and then as far as spicy cat jams. So yeah, I did get Kim cornered a little bit and we made some videos and I'm just like stretching them out as I post them. Cause I honestly don't know when we'll film again. I'm not going to share everything because it's not really my story to tell, but Kim did tell me I could say it. And last fall, she got divorced from the naked man that sometimes showed up in the back of our videos. Um, 
So she is divorced and currently living in an apartment building across from me. And let's just say her life priorities are definitely not her friends right now. <laughs> She's living that single life, doing her best thing. You go girl. But very, very difficult, even though we live right next door to each other, to actually spend any time together. So there's that. Um, so yeah, that's why you're not seeing much over on Spicy Cat Jams either. And again, Minivan Mondays weren't happening because I was going to work with Eddie. So was I going to drop him off and then come do Minivan Monday? I don't know. Um, and also, I pretty much quit all my subscription boxes. And again, I would film those in my minivan. So I can't film those when I have my husband with me all the time. So that's why I have not been able to film. <sighs> so yeah, April, I did get my mammogram done. I have a couple other video or um, doctor appointments I need to do, but I can't do because I'm in the middle of another medical husband thing currently at the end. What are we at? Are we in June? We're at the end of June. I don't even know where this year has gone. <sighs> okay. So basically we got the truck fixed. Yada, yada. Eddie got his infection under control. Very good. April did the little craft day. We did do some financing on our house. We were set up on this weird, again, I live in this small town, the bank we used, we bought our house at the worst possible time. It was before the market crashed, like, what was it, 13 years ago, 14 years ago, and everything went crazy. So, um, we had started out as a construction loan and then they were going to change it into an actual traditional mortgage. Well, then the whole market fell apart. Nobody was doing it. So they basically like do a, did a balloon loan every five years for us and they just renew it. We've repeatedly asked to sit down with someone and like get it a traditional mortgage. Cause even though it was a low interest, it was not as good of interest as an actual mortgage. So we went elsewhere. You know, here's the thing. If someone's not treating you right, there are other people out there that are happy to have your business. So we did get our house all revamped. I don't know if you call it refinanced. Um, and that was good. We had a bunch of work we need to do to our house, which will again not happen because of current events, but at least that part is taken care of. So that made me happy. Um, mortgage. Yeah. Look at notes. Oh, so end of April. I've posted stuff on here, so most of you already know, um, or on my Instagram. My grandmother, who I loved and still do very, very much, passed away April 29th. Now, she and I have been close. I um, would refer to her. I lived across the shelter belt from her and growing up with two older brothers who really had nothing to do nicely with their sister. I would spend a lot of time with grandma because, you know, my parents were busy being parents. You don't have time to, like, do all the stuff with kids when you're just trying to work and run a home. So I spent a lot, a lot, a lot of time at grandma's. And this grandmother was my mom's mom. So having lost my mom, again, everybody pretty much knows that unless you're a brand new friend and if you're a new friend you probably did not pick a chatty video to come see me on um so it's just this huge huge hit on me because I felt like she was really my last connection to my mom now I still have an aunt well aunts and uncles and I'm close close with one of them very close and close to the others but grandma was my connection to my mom so now I don't have my mom I don't have my mom, dad all my grandparents are gone and I thought I just turned 52 and again it's I'm not like I'm this only person this has happened to there's people that this has been much that have had worse situations I'm just saying in my situation when I realized I'm 52 years old and I'm the oldest generation you know how fun it is when you like have like new babies and you take like, you know, three, four generation pictures with moms and grandmoms and all that. I'm 52 and I'm the oldest generation right now. 
That seems insane to me. <sighs> and I don't have children. Well, I do, but again, that's a whole different story. So it was very, very hard. And it still is. And I don't process grief really well because I have so much other crap going on in my life. I don't get the opportunity to just let those feelings process. So, again, sorry. I'm trying to hold it together. But, um, so grandma passed and so disheartening. I would go, I made it a point every year, every two years at a minimum to go visit her. She was living in Florida with my, well, not with them, but in the same area as my aunt and uncle. And to me, it's important to see the people that you love. And I would make the trip to go there with my vacation time because I wanted to see her. Because I knew our time is limited. Um, and you don't get, once people are gone, they're gone. So... I had plans on my 50th birthday. I had everything reserved and we were going, my friend Kim and I were going to Florida. Um, and it had to get canceled because of the lovely virus that stopped the world. And it was right at that time in April where they were like, we're not letting people in across state lines. And it was just insane. And, um, I didn't get to go and I didn't get to go see her at all it was three three years ago was the last time I saw her and in person I mean and um that's hard for me and there were times when I looked at trying to get down there but she lived in a nursing home and you didn't know day to day whether it would be locked down or not if somebody tested positive It'd be, you'd be locked down. So I didn't get to see her. And that was very, very sad. <sighs> but I don't... She knew. I mean, I had told her how much I admired her. And respected her. And she was my hero in so many ways. So I know she knew that. At least there I, there was nothing un, unsaid between us. I knew she loved me. She knew how I felt about her. So that was good. So her funeral was just recently on May 26th, which was her birthday. She would have been 97. So the family decided to do her funeral that day. So I went up to where I'm from because that's where she was being buried. And aunts and uncles all came in there were cousins and I feel badly because I did not have the chance to really talk to some of my cousins that I haven't seen other than you know a Facebook or social media and um it just didn't happen so it timed out that I went early I think I was there for two weeks because my girlfriend my best friend the one that I've talked about several times her oldest daughter was graduating high school with honors. And again, dad's not there. I mean, this first year, a lot of firsts are always hard. And I wanted to be there for her. She's my goddaughter. She's my niece. I love her. So I was there. And I got to participate with that and kind of try and help my friend. It also happened to be her birthday <laughs> at that same weekend. So much needed time for both of us and then I stayed with her so partly if I had stayed at the hotel where the rest of the family was I obviously would have had a better chance to visit with people but I stayed with my girlfriend at her house and I missed out on that I got a little bit of time with my aunts and uncles but um yeah and it was a beautiful day it was a lovely ceremony I did get up and speak which things you never think about having to do but um and I'm glad I did I wish that I had the thought ahead and had like Eddie filming just with his camera everybody that spoke and shared the memories so we could have like shared that because it was so nice to listen to but it would have been nice to listen to again when you weren't 
like an emotional mess. But um, can't go back and do that. So, Eddie came up there for the funeral. And he brought my, um, she was actually my grandma's first cousin, if you look at it. But we just call her cousin. And, but she was the same age or closer in age to my mom. So anyway, she lived, she lives about an hour from us and she really wanted to come, but she wasn't going to drive. She's about 80 years old or she will be 80 this summer. So Eddie drove her up there. He's met her a couple times and I'm like, what a good guy. Well, and Eddie's not feeling well. So he had been doctoring for something that was just about all wrapped up. And then he did a stupid man thing. And so, just so people know, it's not that I don't care about my husband, love him, any of that, but a lot of the medical issues he has, again, I'm not going to spell them all out, are because of his choices, if that makes sense. I mean, nobody deserves to have to deal with any type of illnesses, and there's things that are out of our control, but there are things that are in our control. And he did not do the things that were in his control. And sometimes he continues to not do the things he should do. So when he does get sick, I will be there and I will take care of them, him, but I don't have a lot of empathy. <laughs> if that makes me a bad person and you don't want to like be my online friend anymore, it's okay. It's, I have to stay sane too, but I can't. I mean, I grew up and it was kind of one of the things I talked about at my grandma's funeral was she wasn't the um like warm lovey huggy kind of grandma that you know you ran to when you had a boo-boo and she kissed and made it better it's like I'd go there crying and she'd be like so what are you gonna do suck it up you know this is life you gotta learn how to deal with things and so that's part of me now it's like seriously you did this to yourself what do you want me to do so Eddie was not feeling well, and it was very apparent to everybody. So he tried to get some medication from his primary doctor so he could at least start taking antibiotics until he could get back. And of course, doctors, it's the world we're in where, no, we all can't be liable. What if this is the wrong thing without seeing you? So they're like, no, you just need to go to the urgent care wherever you're traveling to. Well, he didn't, which is fine. So basically he, he left and I was still up there and basically draw, dropped off my cousin and went directly to the urgent care and was put into the ER. Kind of repeat of what happened in March. You get doctors that are not familiar with him and they're finding all these other things wrong besides the actual issue he's there he was having a problem with his foot an infection and they're looking at all these other things that are like out of norm out of range which again he's doctoring and long-term plan we're working towards that but yeah they're not gonna let him go he's obviously sick once again the only hospital well, actually there wasn't a hospital bed so he stayed in the ER overnight, haven't gotten that bill yet, and then that morning he was taken by ambulance to a hospital, which is the best hospital in the area, actually in the country, it's one of the best hospitals, and um, it's two hours away from where we live. So I'm still six hours away the other direction, trying to wrap up family funeral type stuff eddie's taken by ambulance to this other hospital and yeah so once he's checked in and it's like okay he's gonna have to be in they need to try and get the infection under control and i'm like okay i can't do anything anyway same thing i can't stay there at the hospital not to mention i also have to work so I um, finished up and then I came home and he was in the hospital again, probably a week. And they basically got the infection under control 
and then sent him home so they could continue to try and curb the infection so he would be healthy enough for surgery. So let's just say this is, again, I have to be working because I have to be working and working the overnight shift. It is not very easy to find coverage for that shift. People are not very open to it. And I've used up about all of my cards with these people that can cover me because again, life happens. So fast forward, he's home for a week. Then I take him in. We have, and it's, again, I'm working. I had to get someone to come in early so I could leave work at four in the morning. Cause I had to get him to the hospital by 6 a.m. He had surgery June 13th. I was supposed to work that night. And the following one, I called my boss and said, I can't. I just physically, I couldn't. Again, I'd worked all night, had to go through the whole surgery thing. He ended up getting like outpatient surgery, but he had this major surgery on his foot. He is had to keep his foot elevated above his heart. And it's not very easy to do when you live two hours away and you have a truck is what we'd been driving because, oh yeah, my van was having issues. <laughs> So the air conditioning didn't work and the power steering had an issue. So I, we had to take his truck to, or I had to take, to take him to surgery. So how am I supposed to get him home when he can't have his foot down at all? So I ended up finding a hotel because what else do you do? Thankfully they had rates for people that were doctoring, but it still was, you know, it's a hotel. But with price of gas, I guess it was about the same. <laughs> and we hold up in this hotel because so surgery was Monday and follow up was Thursday. Okay, two hours away. So we just stayed in this hotel. Except not me. No, I had like got a couple hours sleep and then had to drive back to our home because this was not the original plan. So I, and it was like crazy hot that week, like hot and humid. So I got a couple hours of sleep that on Monday, woke up, basically drove back the two hours to our home. His parents had left us their van so I could switch vehicles. And then I had to pack up like medications and change clothes, the types of things we'd need for a few days and then drive back because I wanted to drive back before it was super hot. <sighs> and Eddie was able, I mean, the best part of this scenario is it worked. Having him for four days in a hotel room with his basically laying on the bed with his foot elevated. Um, and the only time it wasn't is if he went to the bathroom and back made a huge difference with promoting the initial healing. So it was a good thing. It was a good thing. So now we're over a week out. We actually just had his week follow-up. And again, I will spare you the gory details. But he had major surgery on his foot. There are bandages, dressings that need to be changed daily. And he's unable to work until middle of July most likely he can't drive so I have had my own things put on hold I managed to get into the chiropractor today which I have not been since before the whole grandma funeral thing over a month I have not been able to get my massage because I've had to cancel it because if Eddie has to go to doctor appointments I have to drive him and again the doctor's two hours away so and then the good and the bad part is since I work the overnight I've been able to work my shift but as it was this past vacation or this past um, Friday when we had his follow-up I worked my 12-hour shift had to go home pick him up drive him again no rest <laughs> And he's in a wheelchair, so I have to push him around to the doctor to this in this huge medical complex. Where I'm like, can someone push me? 
<laughs> my body is so broken right now, friends. My knees are so bad, which they're bad anyway. I have not been taking care of myself. My stress level is... I can't even talk about it without almost losing it. It's like I got to work and I'm working with my friend again. Well, my work partner. He's back on our normal shift. And I like get there and I'm like, I give him a warning. I'm like, just so you know, I'm about an inch away from completely losing it. So if you notice, I said, if I suddenly curl up in a ball under the desk or I'm hitting my head against the wall or break into tears and like run out of the office, I just want you to be warned. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And he knows what's going on with Eddie and um, is supportive. But uh, he also knows what it's doing to me. So, again, so I have my husband at home getting himself better. And the frustrating part is, again, this situation could have been prevented. But it doesn't do any good to throw that in someone's face. Um, because you can't go back and change the past. I mean, I'm not going to make him feel worse than he already does. Um, but it's like, you're not working. Yes, there are some opportunities, you know, with work, disability insurance. Um, but you're unable to do anything at home either because you have to sit with your foot up because you need it to heal. And if you're overdoing it, it's just going to make it longer, more problems. And again, every day I am changing this dressing. And I am not medically trained. Thankfully, I can handle it. I didn't think I was going to after they took off the first dressing um, at his first follow-up. I thought I was going to lose it. I did not think I could do it. Yeah, those people that do work in the medical field and can handle that type of wound care, you are appreciated and you matter and make a huge difference. Because, again, I... I do it because I don't have any other choice. There is nobody else to do this. So, that's what's been going on. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're under an hour. That for sure would be over an hour. I'm sure I've forgotten stuff, but I think I've probably told you enough. It's been a lot. And these are like the highlights. Again, I some things I get in more detail, some things I don't, but... I just felt I wanted, it's not that I owe anybody anything, I mean, this is YouTube, it's my channel, I can post or I don't have to post, but I consider many of you good friends, and, um, you know, when you're used to seeing someone all the time and then they kind of just disappear, I mean, just human nature, you're curious, and then also you hope they're okay. So, at the minute, I might be okay, it's... 20 after 12. I have to work tonight at 6 o'clock. The next three nights, actually. Still have coloring I need to finish before the end of the month, but I might actually not be able to do it this time. Which makes me sad, because especially, like, my buddy colors and stuff, I really try to get things done, and I know everyone's understanding, you know, when things don't get done, because we all have this kind of stuff that happens. It's called life. And even if you have the best intentions, it's just life. But for the foreseeable future, I don't have the opportunity to film while I'm at home. At least not this type of chatty um, type video. I'll be able to do my completed pages and I think I have another little mini haul supplies. Um, some stuff I've just decided I'm not filming. I was so excited I had like last December come up it wasn't my personal idea I was turning something into a tag for July a Christmas in July coloring tag and I've been looking forward to it that's not going to happen because I haven't had time to prepare so there's always next year <laughs> and um yeah life just kind of kicks you in the teeth sometimes <sighs> And yeah. So right, I thought I was doing better and like I can handle stuff. But lately, 
I don't know if it's just the buildup of everything, but like anxiety, um, I'm very much not my normal self. I'm not my normal happy cappy. I am very, um, short tempered, um, very little patience and I don't like when I do, I mean, I see myself like snap at people that don't deserve to be snapped at. But I just have all of this. I don't know how to process. And I don't know what to do. Sometimes you're just like, oh, can it just be over? <laughs> can it just be over? Can I just be done? But that's not a solution either. That would just bring more problems, so... I will get through it because that's what I do. I'm a spicer. That's what I do. Um, I'll get through it. But it's really hard right now. And it's really hard because I don't see, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. Um, I know it's there and I just got to keep moving forward and every day forward is progress but it's just been a lot a lot a lot a lot to deal with and the thing is everybody is dealing with something we all are dealing with something and some things are way worse than anything I'm dealing with some of you are probably like oh my gosh I wish that's all I had going on and um, it doesn't make anybody's situation better or worse than yours because whatever you're dealing with is what's happening right now. And, um, yeah. I don't know. Just tired. Tired. A lot of tired. But. What else can I do? Go home. Try and get a nap in. Wake up so I can take care of the bandages on Eddie's foot go to work count down each hour until the 12 are done come home sleep get up repeat for the next two days I'll have one day off this week I have Thursday off and then I work all weekend again so it's a busy work week but so not sure hopefully by um Monday or Tuesday, I'll be able to film, like, my completed pages videos for my coloring channel. No idea. I think I, I'll try and edit another, um, kicking it video for Spicy Cat Jams. Another taste test. Like I said, I got maybe three, three more that Kim and I had pre-filmed. Um, but I honestly have no idea if or when I'll be able to post anything over there. And especially with Kim, because her priorities are are hers right now she's yeah I can't expect her to adapt um and it's my channel <laughs> so it's not like she really has to um care <laughs> but okay friends I've officially made it almost to the hour so I'm gonna wrap it up so I can go home maybe cry a little bit take a nap thank you though just to everybody that's you know sat here and watched this first of all and thank you in advance for any comments and support I have been very very behind in responding to comments I will get to all of you I promise um, now you kind of know why <laughs> hopefully and to those of you that have been in contact with me over the past several months there's several of you that we chit chat and um, you've let me lean on you I appreciate it. It's helped a lot. It really, it really does. You know, people are just like, oh, how can you call people someone a friend you've never met before? And it's like, because friendship is much more than that. And we make connections with people and they are real, true connections. There are, you know, skeevy people out there. FYI, I got a Instagram message from Keanu Reeves who liked my profile. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I'll have to try and remember to share that in my completed pages video. I just had to laugh. It was even like his profile, his picture. 
<laughs> but, um, so yeah, there are the, the toxic, not good people out in the world, but I truly, truly will always believe there are more people like you and I, the normal people just doing our best to get through each day, each hour, each minute, every second, whatever it takes. And I have been at every step of that, um, situation in the past five months. There are days I'm just counting my breaths, trying to make it to the next minute and not lose my sanity. So we'll get there. I hope. I do hope you are doing well. <laughs> I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer. And again, I'm sorry, Debbie's out there. You should never have that term. <laughs> I need to just come up with a different because it's not Debbie's fault. I just, I don't mean to be a wet blanket. I don't. I'm sorry. There were some good things that happened, right? There were some good things that happened. Actually, last night, Eddie and I went for an Audi and we went to the drive-in movie. So that was kind of fun. You know, I chauffeur him around. He sits in the back seat so he can have his foot up and we're at the drive-in. So he sat in the front and had his foot up on the dash and it was pretty fun. We saw, um, Lightyear, which I was excited about when I saw the promos for that. And then we saw Top Gun Maverick. I have my own thoughts on that. I really don't care for Tom Cruise. And I didn't realize he was in it. All of it. It had way too much Tom Cruise. And I thought they were really lazy when they wrote the story. But anyway, that's my personal opinion. It's like, okay, just remake the first one because you did all of the same big signature scenes again didn't even really change them but anyway <laughs> that was my thought it was nice to get out and um eddie was happy to be out of the house for a little bit so see there's some good things and you guys you're good you are good you are good in my life thank you you truly do help me and make me feel a little bit better about this chaos that I am submerged in. So thank you. You've made a difference. You matter. You matter to me right now. Whatever else is going on, you matter to me and I need that. So thank you. But I am going to get home because I really do need to try and sleep. Which I don't know if I'm able to, but I'm going to try to sleep because otherwise work will be extremely long tonight. So Goodbye, my friends. Thank you again. And I will show a video, a little snippet on how to speed videos up. Because I said something about that in my last one. I hope all of you put this on like double speed. Because I know I talk slow enough. You could increase the speed and still understand me. But some of you are like, what? That's an option. So I'm going to try and do like just a little snippet. You know, a little public service announcement. This is how you can do it. That way you can watch more videos in the same amount of time. So, okay, my dear friends, I really do need to go because now I'm officially over an hour. I milked it. Yes, I did. I milked it. And yeah, thanks. I love you guys. If you don't see me for a while, now you know why. And when you do get to see me again, maybe I'll actually be getting to do like a color and chat or I'll be doing a minivan Monday because I don't have Eddie with me at work. You just never know. But when that pops up, You'll be like, ah, things are improving. Until then, just say a prayer for me, please. I love you guys. Bye.